It's Shira. I you should probably know, because otherwise you wouldn't be here celebrating with me. And let's get on to my about mitzvah montage. But before then, remember to silence all phones and grab your snacks so you don't miss a cute picture of me. Ready? Lights! Camera! Montage!
אנשים שהחיים כל כך קשים, מה יהיה עוד יום עד שנה? אבל אני מחייך, לא דואג להמשך, כי יש לי, יש לי אמונה. לפעמים מרגישים שהחיים כל כך קשים, מה יהיה עוד יום עוד שנה? אבל אני מחייך, לא דואג להמשך, כי יש לי, יש לי אמונה. אני מאמין בניסים, אני יודע שיש אלוקים, והוא בורא עולם, הכוח של כולם, שומע את קולי. אני מאמין בניסים, אני יודע שיש אלוקים, והוא בורא עולם, הכוח של כולם, ישלח לי את ה...
You guys are still here? The video's over. Go enjoy your dessert. Thanks for coming. Mazel Tov Shira, Bubby and I love you and we are so proud of you and all of your sisters. Shira, you are such a special person and we love you and we're so very, very proud of you. And we wish you Mazel Tov, Mazel Tov to you, to your sisters, to your parents, to Sata, to all of us. Very, very proud of you. Mazel Tov. Mazel Tov Shira, you look gorgeous like everybody else. Mazel Tov Shira on your bat mitzvah. Hope you have a great time. Hi, Shira. Love you. Look great. Mazel tov, Shira. So proud of you. So proud of who you're becoming. And you look beautiful, just like me. Shira, I love you so, so much. Mazel tov. You're so wonderful and kind. And you know what I feel about you. Mazel tov, Shira. You look so pretty. From your favorite sister, me. I love being a bat mitzvah. People have so much more trust in me. Mazel tov, Shira. You're a wonderful girl. You can do whatever you want. Just keep, put your mind to it. And we wish you all the luck. Mazel tov on your bat mitzvah. Love you, Shira. Mazel tov. All the best on everything. Shira, I just want to wish you a mazel tov for your bat mitzvah. And you should have many, many, many more happy days. And uh, all my love, your Aunt Joan. Did he die? Die, da dee dee die. Ay, ay, da dee dee die. Ay, ay, da 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 dee da da. Did he die? Die, da dee dee die. Ay, ay, da dee dee die. Ay, ay, da 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 dee da da. Did he die? Die, da dee dee die. Ay, ay, da dee dee die. Ay, ay, da 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 dee da da. Did he die? Die, da dee dee die. Ay, ay, da dee dee die. Ay, ay, da 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 dee da da. Did he die? Die, oh. Did he die? Die, oh.
question for you all, everybody. And the question is, especially all of Shira's friends, did you come here to have a good time tonight? Pretty good, let's try it one more time. Everyone, did you come here to have a great time tonight? Well, ladies and gentlemen, everyone, please rise. Please stand up at your tables. As first up into the room, I'd like to invite in mom and dad escorting Leia, Sarah, and the Toro. Everybody up, up, everybody up, let's go, come on, oh yeah. I'm a 
Let's go!
Somebody bring a chair in the middle. Let's get Sheila up in the chair. Let's go. Are you ready, girls? Are you feeling strong? Are you feeling strong? Make sure you aim her towards the camera. Aim her towards the camera. Lift her up. Wave to the camera, Sheila. Wave. Wave. Keep waving. Keep waving. Oh, now that's a lift. Aim up towards the camera, guys. Wave now, wave to the camera, Sheila. Wave! Everybody say, I'm Israel. Come on. Sing, I'm Israel. One more time. Let me hear you sing it. Are you ready? All the shearers, friends, nice and loud. One, two, three, sing. If you know the words, if you know the words, let me hear you sing along. Oh yeah! 
Thank you for coming to Shira's Bat Mitzvah. My children will tell you that there is one subject in their homework that they simply can't ask me to help them with, and that is Hebrew. Anytime I offer to help, they quickly remind me of the 32 I got on the Hebrew regions, and then they proceed to call their bubby, their mother, or their sisters for help. Uh, so you can imagine my discomfort and the blank look on my face when I went to school for, public, for a parent-teacher conference and the teachers would routinely use a Hebrew word to describe Shira, and that word was chen. Knowing my other children, I was very concerned with what that word meant. And uh, I ran home to look it up, and thankfully the dictionary definition was loveliness or grace. Although I learned, in fact, that it has no true def definition, rather it is used to describe someone who is pure goodness. Shira is an amazing young lady, someone at a young age who is capable of seeing the good in everybody. Somebody who has the ability to see things from the other person's perspective and to always consider the feelings of others in her decision making. Shira is always looking for a way to help someone else, be it the new girl in class, the friend who is down, or quite frankly even the teacher who needs to pick me up after a difficult class. Probably the biggest compliment, Shira, that I can give to Shira is that she, at all of her 12 years of age, teaches me by example every day how to be a better person. I would la now like to call up Shira to share with us a few words. Good afternoon, and welcome to my Bat Mitzvah celebration. Thank you to all of those who have traveled from near and far to join us in the celebration. I especially want to thank Rabbi Goller for helping me prepare my Bat Mitzvah speech. In preparation for my Bat Mitzvah, I chose to learn about the concept of Shira. 
Specifically, I chose to learn more about Shira's Devorah with my bubby. Most often, the word Shira is used as a name for beautiful, talented, and amazing young women. However, it also means song. After learning Shira's Devorah with my bubby, I wondered, why is this song called Shira's Devorah? Well, Devorah certainly sang the song. Wasn't Yael really the heroine of the story? Even though I know my mom can't sing, I still questioned why the song wasn't called Shira's Yael the Song of Yael, in recognition of Yael's bravery and victory. Rabbi Shimchen Raphael Hirsch, the great German rabbi and leader, writes that even though Yael was the one who took action, it was Devorah who was the source of inspiration and encouragement for all the people. Devorah set the tone for all to follow with her righteousness and leadership. She inspired those like Baruch and Yael to mobilize and defeat Cicero and his army. That is why Devorah gets the credit and the song is named for her. However, the contributions of the women of that time were not limited to Devorah. Rabbi Hirsch continues to highlight the importance of all women in the time of Devorah and how they all played a role in leading the Jewish people to victory. For example, Shira's Devorah specifically highlights the fact that the women made the weapons between the wells for those who went off to war and their prayers provided the inspiration and fortitude necessary for the rest of the Jewish men to go off into battle. Zedekot Hashem Shem Yitno. It is from there among the women who sat there, tirelessly crafting the weapons. Louder than the sound of archers, there among the watering places, let them chant the gracious acts of the Hashem, his gracious deliverance of Israel. Then did the people of the Hashem march down to the gate. Said another way, only after the women prepared the weapons and sing the praises of Hashem were the warriors able to go off into battle and prevail. According to Rabbi Hirsch, it was the women's preparations of the weapons, together with their prayers, that, pro that provided the inspirations for the victory that followed. The inspiration started in the Jewish home, led by the women, and grew from there. We learn from here that the Jewish woman has a special responsibility and plays a unique role in Jewish society. We are, to be, we are to be the core and inspiration to our families, communities, and the entire B'nai Israel. I, as a bat mitzvah, like Yael, and the woman who came before me, am now challenged to be a young woman of inspiration and motivation to those around me. Like Devorah, I aspire to write my own Shira. As I become a vital part of B'nai Israel, I hope to use it to encourage others to recognize the name of Hashem and motivate them to lead B'nai Israel to great heights. At this time, I would like to thank the women in my life who provide me with the inspiration and motivation I need to, to succeed. Mommy, thank you for always being there for me and my sisters. Your ability to balance the responsibility and demands of being a wonderful doctor and the best mom of the world always amazes me. Bubby, thank you for learning with me for my bat mitzvah and for always taking my phone calls and helping me do my homework long distance. Thank you for showing me how to inspire and help others through the Tikva house. I appreciate all that you do for us and others and look forward to our time together. Safta, your reputation for helping others is legendary and an inspiration to me every day. But what truly amazes me is that you are always avail available for me and my sisters whenever called upon. Willing to drop everything on a moment's notice since your grandchildren always come first. Yet. <laughs> Leia, you are a true big sister. Always looking out for us and making sure we are okay. Your daily tips on fashion are always appreciated and have helped me avoid a fashion snafu on my occasions. Sarah, I always enjoy our sports competitions and your constant joking. While you may still be able to beat me in basketball, we both know one day I will beat you. Rabbi Hout, get the trophy case ready because the girls of class 2020 intend to deliver you your first championship. Atara, you are always there to add a little life to the party. You are a constant ball of energy and a blast to play with, laugh with, and just hang out with. To all my sisters, I look forward to Sister Night every Friday night. I love knowing that even if we are in a fight, we always have each other's backs. Sisters, 40 forever. I love you. Daddy, while you are only a girl on Purim, I wanted to say thank you for all that you do. You provide so much for all of us and always find a way to make every moment a fun one. For all the time you spent at the dressmaker and preparing for my bat mitzvah, you get a special shout out as an honorary, inspirational woman. Opa, my Dunkin' Donuts buddy. 
I love you so much and enjoy all the time we spend together. I look forward to going with you and Bubba to Israel later in the year to celebrate my bat mitzvah. I couldn't let my bat mitzvah party go by without giving a shout out to Pa. You always knew how to make every one of us feel special and loved. I know how much you would have wanted to be here, so to make sure that we got to experience this day together. So I had, so I had the dressmaker sew a piece of your hanky into my dress over my heart. I miss our time together, your jokes and your constant laughter. I will always love you. So all of my uncles, aunts, and cousins, thank you all for always being there for me. Each of you have added something special into my life and provided me with so much inspiration, laughter, and love. I truly appreciate it. To my friends, as I set out our moving up ceremony, we are a unique group. We have strong bonds and each of you brings something special into my life. I look forward to continuing to strengthen these, strengthen these bonds and partying in middle school. Thank you again for coming to my bat mitzvah. I've heard it a hundred times and I still cried. So, uh, <clears throat> Before I introduce the next speaker, I wanted to say thank you to Rabbi Schwab for the kind words he said in shul. It really was very moving and appreciated. So thank you, Rabbi Schwab. Uh, <clears throat> our next speaker really needs no introduction and thankfully he no longer needs a house. Uh, <laughs> where is he? Where is he? All joking aside, our family was honored to have Rabbi and Rebbe Gala live with us for a period of time. In addition to learning that Rabbi and Rebbe knew how to clean magic markers off walls, and he said I could say, and urine off couches, uh, we also confirmed what we suspected. They are two of the most loving and dedicated people, and we are blessed to have them in West Hempstead. Despite being a quote-unquote part-time rabbi during the time that he was living with us, Rabbi Gala routinely was taking calls until midnight, spending every waking hour looking out for the people of our community, while Rebbitzin Gala juggled being a doctor, mom, and Rebbitzin with grace and dignity. Rabbi and Rebbitzin Gala are more than just leaders of our community. They and their children will forever be a part of the Oppenheim family. It is with great honor that I give you my rabbi, my friend, my brother from another mother, Rabbi Gala. Before I rabbi in, my entire table, I would say, honor to share a simple with all of you. I want to leave everybody out, so I apologize, but always an honor to share a simple with all of you. Every rabbi has a dilemma on how you get to engage and get to know your balabatim in the community. And of course, there are many ways to do so. You can host for Shabbos lunch or Friday night dinner. You can attend simchas. You can even go to their homes for Shabbos meals, Yom Tif meals. Those are all very nice and dandy, but um, there's actually more effective ways to get to know your Balabatim. And one of the ways is to actually attempt to move into one of their homes. And it really is a fascinating way to get to know a family in your shul and community. And if we we're trying to make a list of the people in the room who we're going to go to next. So please see me afterward if you're willing to volunteer to be the next victim of the Oppenheim uh, tradition. It really is a true honor to be here this afternoon, this evening, share the simcha. And Moshe warned me already, he actually is prepared for me to start crying, which I probably will in a few moments. But before I do, I have so many stories that I wanted to tell. Moshe already shared one of them um, about our time together in the home. I want to tell you about the great chest of the family, Yaakov's time in the snack closet, making that noise, climbing the shelves in their snack closet. Stephanie, you know what I'm talking about? I was trying to think of really one word which can capture our feelings about the Oppenheim home and our time there. And one word came to mind, one four-letter word. Relax. And that is the word holy. Thank God. Not just holy because of the gaping hole in Moshe's around the hat sweatpants, But because, imagine yourselves making an offer to your... <clears throat> to your neighbor and rabbi, who, uh, for those who don't know in the room, 
uh, we're homeless for a uh, little bit. Uh, and you say to them, by the way, guys, if you need a place to go, we're always happy to have you. And then it was an Arab Shabbos, and I saw Yael, I was actually driving, pulling out of the driveway, and I saw Yael, and I said, Yael, remember that offer that you made a few weeks ago? She's like, what was that again? I said, oh, to host us, if we can't find a place to live, we know we have nowhere to go. She's like, oh yeah, w was that sincere? Of course! So uh, we said, I think we're coming on Sunday night. And for the next four months, with incredible With incredible grace, and it really smiles on their faces, Moshe Yael, and there are four incredible, incredible young women, I would say now, right, Atara, young women, became like family to the Galler family. And the four girls took care of our children as, they were, as though they were their siblings. And Moshe and Yael, really, every single day, kept asking, what can we do to make your stay better? We wanted to stay longer, of course, that didn't work out. We are forever emotional and indebted to the two of you and your four girls. And I wanted to tell Dr. and Mrs. Lehman and Mrs. Oppenheim how proud you should be of your children. Not just because of those four months. That's only a small sign of the kind of people that they truly are, the Bali Chesed that they are. So they all deserve, give me a moment to cry for a moment, a round of applause. Now on to Shira. True story. It was the second Sunday in the Oppenheim home, and trying to repay our incredible debt to you guys, we said, what can we do to help? And we're running around the house, there's some art classes, and this class is my kids have to go to school, and Shira has to go to art class. And so I said to y'all, you know what, let me drive her to art class. Great. So we get in the car, and we drive to art class, and it's not so far, it's only young as West Hempstead, it's not so far. And we're about a block away, and there I hear a voice in the back seat. I hear Rabbi Galler. Yes, Shira, everything okay? She's like, um, I think this is kind of weird. I'm like, what, everything okay? She's like, well, you know, like, the rabbi dropped me to art class or something like that. I'm like, yeah, that is kind of weird, but that's our, kind of our new reality right now. But that's so sweet of you to uh, point out. Thank you very much. Shira, you are an incredible young woman. You are always poised, always smiling, always calm and serene. I don't know how you do it. And as your dad said before, you have an incredible need of chen. You always add a certain aura to the room. So I want to share a divrei bracha on the theme that you spoke about, the theme of shira. And ask an instant question I think you probably have thought of over the course of your learning. The paradigm of shira in the Torah is Miriam. Miriam leaves the women, shira hayam, after Moshe Rabbeinu. And the Torah tells us, shira, that Miriam grabs her toth, grabs her musical instrument, and leads the women in Shira. But right afterwards, the next pasuk, the Torah says, Batan lahen Miriam. And Miriam answered them. Where is the toth? Where is the instruments? Didn't she bring them with her? The Sefer Kamosi Shalorav has a beautiful insight. And here's what he says. I think it really applies so nicely to you and who you are, Shira. He writes that, truthfully, we all think of shira as music, where you have instruments and things in the background and harmonies. It's all really nice, all beautiful. But real shira, true shira, is really innate and it's natural. It doesn't have instruments. And he says an incredible novelty, an incredible chiddush. He says that at the beginning, Miriam led the women with instruments. She led them out and got them going. But at the moment of the shira, she put down the instrument and just sang. No drums, no guitar, nothing. Just voice. Just natural shira. Because true shira is natural and innate. 
It's not accompanied by outside instruments. It comes from within. It comes from the heart. As I said before, Shira, you are naturally just an incredible young woman. So positive and so happy and so chinic, so sweet and so genuine. I could wish the bracha that you should do this and do that and grab this and grab that. I'm not going to. I'm going to wish you the bracha that I'm here, Sashem, should continue to be you. Continue to be a Shira. Somebody who has such a natural thing, a natural need of chesed, a natural smile, a natural way to be a giving person. In your Sashem, we hope and pray that you will be the Shira that you're named for, Kishma Kenat. You certainly are that Shira. We look forward to much nachas from you for so many years to come. And Shira, once again, thank you for being a sister of my siblings. Moshe Nyal, we love you guys so much. You guys are the best. <laughs> you held it together well. I didn't even open the, the tissues I left you, so that's good. Where's Rochi? When Yal and I moved to West Hempstead approximately 15 years ago, there was a raging debate about where to send your children to school. Under the leadership of Rabbi Sadi, and I don't know if she's still here, but his work wife, Mrs. Deutsch, the tone and tenor of that debate has changed as it's simply impossible to argue with success. Today, the illustrious yeshiva of Hank 609 and middle school is bursting at its seams as it, is, as it has regained its past glory and reputation for scholastic excellence while maintaining the warmth and affection that has become synonymous with the name Hank. Yal and I have personally experienced the great lengths with which Rabbi Saidi, Mrs. Deutsch, and the entire staff at Hank will go to to ensure that each child is successful and feels loved. And we wanted to publicly thank them for their commitment and devotion to our children, school, and the entire community. I want all the girls of the day is to really let them hear it now. Please join me in welcoming Rabbi Saidi to say a few words. Mazel Tov, Rishis, Rabbi Schwab, Rabbi Galler, Rabbi Hach. Gee, what a special day. Last week Moshe saw me and he said, Rabbi, uh, I have to ask you, Rishis, you know, I'm going to give you the business a little bit when I introduce you. Do I have permission to say whatever I want to say? I said, sure, absolutely. But I went home and I said, oh boy, what do I do? I need to start working on some rebuttals and getting back at Moshe. So I don't know what to do now. He, he didn't get me and I got a whole thing about him. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Let me, I'll, I'll, as it, let, let's see how it goes. Shira, every Shabbos, Parshas Chukas, every year, I sit there in shul, little ADT, you know, I have also some Mepharshim. Not that I'm this big Tom Chacham, but he makes the davening go faster. I went through Mepharshim, after Mepharshim, after Mepharshim, hoping that this would be the year that I would understand what in the world happened when Moshe hit the rock, and could it be this poor person who from that day, he could have just closed his eyes and stayed in the palace and had a great life. What made him get up and go and ask for this trouble? This person who heard nothing but complaints and complaints and complaints, he makes one seemingly error. We're not downplaying it. Hashem asked him to speak to the rock. He hit the rock. But he can't enter Eretz Yisrael. And there's so many Mepharshim with different angles. Being Moshe, being who he is. He tried to understand on his level what he did wrong. He finally came across something that gave me a little bit of a nechama. And I want to share that with you because it has a lot to do with you. You see, HaKadosh Baruch who asked Moshe Rabbeinu at a time for one last test. Eretz Yisrael would need a lot of amuna, a lot of faith. And Hashem gave him a test of faith. He threw in there a line that was confusing. He says, Kach asamate, take the stick. If you didn't want him to hit, hit the rock, what are you taking a stick for? And yet he says, speak to the rock. So Chazal said, he did speak to a rock, and nothing happened. He spoke to another rock, and nothing happened. So he started to put two and two together and make his own cheshbonos. He told me to take a staff. I tried speaking to the rock, 
it's not working, it must be like the first time I have to hit the rock. But this Mepharis did what Hashem really wanted Moshe Rabbeinu to do was to walk miles and speak to rock after rock after rock after rock, even if it took a week, until he found that rock that would give water. That's the test of Amunah. And the Mepharis said, we see that by Avram Avinu. By Avram Avinu it says, By Yitzchak, Yitzchak will be your future. Wonderful. But the next day Hashem says, Oh, you know that son of yours that I said will be great? You mind just shechting him for me? If you don't mind. Avram Avinu could have stood and said, What are you talking about? It's a machlekes in Hashem. Which Hashem do I listen to? Hashem who said that your son is going to be great, you showed me the stars, you took me out. Or the Hashem who says, by the way, that same son that I told you is going to be the future of the Jewish people, I want you to shach them. When Shabbat got up in the morning and saddled his own, his own donkey to go, no questions asked. I don't understand it, but that's what Hashem wants me to do. No questions asked. Amuna, faith. We know that Rosh Chodesh is affiliated, connected to women, they did certain malachas that they don't do. It's their Yom Tov, and we know why, because when the men came to ask them for their jewelry, I know the jokes, women don't give up their jewelry easily, but it wasn't because of that. They really said, we don't understand the cheshbonos, we don't get it. But they said, honey, I'm, I'm not against Moshe, he, he's not here. Let, let, me show, let me take out the calculator. Let's sit down, let me show you the calculation. He was supposed to go up this date. He was supposed to come back this day. He's not here. What should we do? The women said, I don't know about your books. I don't know about your calculators. I don't know anything. All I know is that Moshe, Emes, Tarasso, Emes, I believe in Moshe. I don't know the calculations. I don't understand it. But I know that Moshe Rabbeinu took us out and he'd take us into Eretz Yisrael. Complete faith, blind faith without asking any questions. From the time that I've gotten to know you, Shira, Anything that's been asked of you is with a smile. How quickly can I do it? When would you like it done? And you do it so well. Certain times you come to me, you advocate for yourself or to your, your teachers. You have a question. You process it. You listen to it. I could see sometimes you're not so happy with it. It's not so easy being a kid. If a certain period was taken away, we're supposed to go on a trip and we're not going and things change and it's raining now. With, with children. Me too. We get disappointed. You may be disappointed for a split second, but the smile comes on, back on, and you say, thank you, Rabbi Siddiq. You accept the answer, and you go back. Whatever mommy and daddy say, you accept. Whatever grandma says, you accept. It's not easy, a, a young girl your age, to have such strong amuna, and to be able to decide right from wrong, and to say, I don't understand it all. One day maybe I will, but right now this is what I have to do. It's truly remarkable. As a bat mitzvah, that's going to get harder. Let me paint a little scenario for you that might be difficult for you next year. As we all know, in the Oppenheim home, basketball is of some importance, can we say? As I was dancing, I saw Moshe wearing sneakers, and I said, of course, at any moment, a pickup game might be going on anywhere. Outside, they might be looking for a three-on-three. -three. He's ready to go. Picture this scenario, Shira, next year. You're going to be on the team. Rabbi Hecht, hold on to your seat. There's a good ending. You're down by two, five seconds on the clock. You go into the huddle. The coach says, all right, sure, here's what we're doing. The play is four down. They're going to go down to the basket, clear the area for you. Someone's going to set a pick for you, and your defender and you, you're going to take them down the lane and right, right up, right? A layup, and we're going to tie it. We're not going for the win. But here comes the problem. Out of timeout, Moshe will be standing on the court and screaming, Shira, top of the key, three-pointer, we're going for the win. What do you do? Here's a girl who wants to do the right thing. What do you do? Do you listen to your coach or do you listen to your dad? Now that one I don't have an answer for. You're on your own on that one. Yael gave me some good advice. Moshe liked to sit with me. My girls were on the team. And we like to sit together. And Yael said, Rabbi, do yourself a favor. Go to the pharmacy. They sell these foam things, very soft little things. Put it in your ears so when Moshe screams and he jumps on, I never, by the end of the game, my hair was messed up. My tie was hanging on the back. 
And she said, why don't you put these two things in so you'll be able to handle it? Do you know that, where, where that comes from? He never misses a game if he's in town. He cares about every achievement, every wonderful quality that you guys have. But there's support. Sarah went through it. So you speak to her. She'll be able to guide you. It's not easy, but you get through it. I would listen to the coach. And your mom, in a more quiet and reserved way, unlike your dad, watches every movement and every achievement how you continue to impress and become that Bastora and the young lady that shines. Everyone wants to be your friend. It's no surprise that Shiro was chosen to be the, one of the class spokesmen at the moving up ceremony. And I remember sitting there and watching your mom and your dad and grandma beaming with nachas that all that they put into you is coming, is coming together. We just took over. We do a few things here and there. It's, it's all their work. Your grandparents, the Lehmans, your, your extended family, all that they've put into you. Truly, truly remarkable. Now, your grandmother, Mrs. Oppenheim, has given me an offer. I haven't cashed in on it yet. She said, Rabbi Sadiq, anytime you want, I'll get together with you for a cup of coffee. Boy, do I have stories to tell you about Moshe. <laughs> you won't believe it. So one day I'm going to cash in on that. I'm going to have a cup of coffee. And you know what I'm going to find out? and to find out just how remarkable they are. The way I've been able to see it through you and through the other children. So I want to wish you a mazal tov. Um, Rabbi Hach, I, I don't know what to say, I'm jealous because from now on you get this precious girl over here. And we will be hearing nachas from you for many, many, many years to come. You've made us proud. There's that smile again, I'm going to miss it. And make sure you come and visit. Mazal tov. <laughs> Thank you very much. Just a couple more quick speeches, but uh, before I introduce the next speaker, I would like to point out I did not sign the contract about how to behave on the side of the court. That's number one. And, and, <laughs> and I'd like to point out that Rabbi Hach, I witnessed two things. It wasn't this past season, it was, the, no, it was what do you call it, her eighth grade season. I witnessed two things. The first time I've ever seen someone say to Hillam on the side of a court, and, and, and you get warned about coming onto the court when you got so excited. So hopefully we'll experience that again soon together. And as Shira said, 2020 championship. Uh, so this one's going to be a little tough. It's customary at Simchas for the husband to get up and say how much he loves his wife and how she's his best friend. When you have four daughters and you have to speak every couple of years, it gets kind of difficult to come up with new ways to say, I love you to your spouse publicly. Uh, for me, it's quite easy because I think each year it gets easier as our bond grows uh, stronger. This time, though, I'm not going to tell Yael how much I love her. Rather, I'm going to publicly thank her. Uh, now I'm going to cry. Uh, these last few years have not been easy. And... Uh, Quite frankly, I have not been particularly uh, easy to deal with, more so than usual, Rabbi. Uh, and at times, uh, I've struggled with some of the challenges. Yael, you have stayed strong for both of, both of us throughout. You have been there when I needed you and gone well above the call of duty. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I love you. Yael, please come up and share a few words with Pat Mr. <laughs> Um, welcome to Shira's Bat Mitzvah. Um, it's so meaningful to have each of you here tonight to share the special moment. What? You always do save me. Uh, the special moment with our family. Shira, you're an exceptionally mature, warm, and fun-loving young lady who's already established a reputation as a true friend and good and good-hearted person as evidenced by your unanimous selection this past week to be the female representatives to speak at your sixth grade moving up ceremony. Daddy and I are so proud of you and look forward to watching you to continue to grow as a Bas Yisrael. 
Since the theme of tonight is music, Shira, I wanted to speak briefly about the various roles of music throughout Jewish history and how our Shira has lived up to her name. We typically think of music as celebratory and a means to bring people together. However, music also plays other roles. It's been used as a vehicle to praise Hashem as well as a means to soothe and heal in times of distress. For example, the job of the Levium in the Beis HaMikdash was to play musical instruments. The Mishnah says that music and song filled the air in the Beis HaMikdash, and it was through this joyous music that our prayers were lifted to Hashem for him to answer. In addition to helping lift our prayers, music has been used to soothe and heal. Sarah, Yaakov's granddaughter, used music to soothe Yaakov and temper the shock of the news that Yosef was alive. Shaul HaMelech was often played by an evil spirit and used music to calm his soul. And Elisha and Miriam each used song to provide them with the joy and clarity of mind necessary for their Nebuah to return. She was our only child not named after a loved one. It was simply a name that Moshe and I liked. When I think about Shira and the type of person she is, I'm amazed at how accurate our choice of name was. She was a wonderful girl and is turning into an amazing young woman. Like music, she is multifaceted. She's a good athlete and a good student, but most of all, she's a good person. She is a child who always has a smile on her, is always looking out for others, trying to bring people together and be the peacemaker amongst family and friends. She wrote, like music and joy, you, you bring joy and excitement into our lives every day. I'm in awe of your ability, like Sarah, to soothe others, going out of your way to welcome a new student to your class or help a friend who may be hurt or sad. You not only volunteer to help the Kahal kids at school, but look forward to it and speak about the children and their accomplishments at home like a proud mother. I'm so proud of your appreciation and understanding of the importance of tefillah and how you ask your dad to wake you early so you can daven at home on the days you miss davening at school because of your commitment to kahal. But most of all, I'm amazed at the level of maturity you possess and your ability to see the big picture and put the feelings of others at the forefront of every decision you make. There are not too many 12-year-old girls that have the compassion that you do and will refuse to wear something new to a friend's bat mitzvah because, in your words, I don't want to take any attention away from my friend on their special day. I just want to take a second to go off script or off label, as we say in medicine, and I see Moshe squirming and already. Um, I just wanted to publicly thank Hashem for my Moshe and my children. You are my everything, and I love you so much. Billy, I can't do it. Now back to Shira. Shira, you're an amazing daughter, sister, and friend. You have a maturity, composure, and compassion beyond your years. Many parents give their children a bracha at their bat mitzvah about who they should become. Daddy, and my bracha to you is that you should simply continue to have the strength to be you. We're so proud of you, and we love you very much. Mazel tov. I always get scared when they write some, read, some, read something I haven't written. Uh, two more quick ones. One is Tara, but she's going to go last. You're going to go last. Uh, next, as Sira mentioned in her speech, she is blessed to have wonderful role models for how to be a Vas Torah. And she excitedly learned with one of these role models in pre preparation for her bat mitzvah. I would like to call up Shira's grandmother, role model, and Chavrusa to say a few words. Bobby. to apologize in advance for the waterworks. Shira knows I get very emotional, especially when it comes to her. When Shira was a very little girl, Robbie and I used to go and visit, and the Oppenheims lived on Susan Court. And we would sleep in the bedroom uh, on the ground level. And very in, early in the morning, Shira would tiptoe very, very quietly down the steps, and very quietly come into our room and very quietly and carefully kissed me softly on the forehead 
and then she would quietly, so as not to wake us, tiptoe back up the steps. And when I woke up in the morning, I would say, Shira, I had the most amazing dream. I dreamt that I was kissed by an angel. And uh, Shira would just smile. But Shira, I want to tell you, I was kissed by a real angel. We thought your parents had Nabua when they named you Shira because you love music, you love to sing, you have a beautiful voice, you love to play piano. But we really think they had tremendous Nabua when they gave you your middle name, Rivka. You were named after Rivka Imenu, and you have so many of Rivka Imenu's qualities. Rivka was chosen at a very young age to be the perfect wife for Yitzka Kavinu because she personified chesed, caring, and kindness. She saw that Eliezer, Abraham's servant, was tired and thirsty for his long trip, from his long trip, and she drew water from the well so that he could drink. Rivka even offered to give water to his camels. She cared about the welfare of a complete stranger. Rabbi Shimshon Raphael Hirsch, as you mentioned, in his commentary on Kaya Sara, describes Rivka as modest, morally pure, and innocent, who brings with her no the, the nobility of fine feelings and morals. These words describe you too, Shira. You care about everyone who crosses your path. Even as a little girl, you were careful not to wake us with your angel kisses. Now, when a new girl comes into your class, you care about her fitting in. You invite her to join you at your table for lunch so that she would feel welcome. When there is a party or an event, you care that everyone is invited. No one should ever be left out. Even when we sat together in the hotel on Pesach, you saw the waiters working so hard while we were sitting and eating our meal, and you offered to stand up and help them so that they could also have a little bit of time to sit down. And most amazing to me was when your teacher assigned an essay to your class to write about which superpower you would like to have. You said you wished you had the superpower to make people care about each other. Your teachers recognized this quality of, in you and invited you to speak for the class at the sixth grade moving up ceremony. They thought that your kindness to others and your good meters made you a role model for the rest of the class. And Shira, you really are a role model for all of us. Kind, selfless, and caring. I would like to give you a bracha, Shira. I pray that as you continue to grow, you never stop caring for others, and that the caring and kindness and chesed you show to others will be repaid to you a thousandfold every day of your life for the rest of your life. Master. One last speaker. It's really short. She wrote it herself. Um, since I'm showing my age, I'm almost ready to say this, um, this is going to be my introduction to you at your bat mitzvah because I don't think I can dance anymore. Uh, there's going to be a lot of Tylenol tonight. Anyway, so I'd like to call up Atara, Tara Manucha, to say a few words that she wrote for, by herself for her sister Shira. I love to play with her and talk. When she has friends over, she will let me play with her. I love when she comes to sustain aid on Shabbos night and hate when she goes away for Shabbos. Me and she will fight a lot, but when we do, we say sorry in two seconds. I hope you have a great bar mitzvah. I love you, Sheila, from your favorite sister, Tara. <laughs>
Here comes Shira, let's go back to the dance floor, Shira! Everyone sing along! Bye, bye, bye. One more time! All right, who's ready for a game of Coke and Pepsi? Get a partner. Everyone say hello. Say what's up, DJ Maddie. Say what's up, Rebecca the Judge. Rebecca is very mean. She's gonna get you out. I've, they're under strict rules to cut you no slack. Are you ready on your mark? Remember, if you're the last one over, or you do the wrong thing, or you talk during 7-Up, you're out. On your mark, get set, Pepsi. Coke. Be quick, Coke. Uh-oh, should we get him out? Do one more round. All right, I'll give you, that's the freebie. So a few of you get out. Now we're really gonna get you out. Coke. Pepsi. Shira. Shakespeare. Pepsi. Oh, you can't rescue that one. You guys are out. Sorry. Everyone say Zygazen. <laughs> On your mark. Get set. Coke. Pepsi. Coke. Pepsi. Shakespeare, Five Hour Energy, Dr. Pepper, Five Hour Energy, Seven Up! Don't talk, don't breathe, this is the real game. What? up? Oh. Hi, Giggles. How's it going in there? What are you doing? You got a tunnel of hair. 
What's up, ribbon? What's going on? How are you? What you do? You also got a ribbon. It's a silver grayish ribbon. How are you? Hi! How are you doing? Don't talk to me. What's your name? Okay. Wow, you look super comfortable. How is it going? Your friend is weightlifting you. What's her name? Very strong. Hey, what's up, little sister? How's it going? Hi, Shira. Have a good time? How's partner, Shira? Got some cool braids going down the back of your head there. Who did them? Pepsi. Coke. All right, evil judge is going to get you out. On your mark, it's set Pepsi. Shakespeare. Pepsi. Ah, oh, I can't get you out. Oh, no, sister, we gotta let's take a sister out. On your mark, it's set Shakespeare. Pepsi. Coke. Pepsi. Coke. Shakespeare. Shira. Pepsi. Seven up. Don't move, don't breathe. How's it going? You're doing so well. You learned the rules so quickly. You're doing excellent. Don't move. Don't talk. What's your name? What's your name? Do I hear giggles over here? I heard something. What's up? <laughs> hey, what's how you doing? Thank you. What are you doing? Biting your lip. I don't know if that's actually breaking the rule. Did I say no lip biting? I don't think so. What's up, boys? The only males representing during Coke and Pepsi. On your mark, get set, Coke. All right, last one over is going to be out. Pepsi. Rebecca, who's the last one? Uh-oh. Girl in the white and yellow. Good job, but you're out. That partner. Get out. Don't move, don't breathe. How's it going? What you doing? Why are you wearing a sweatshirt? Aren't you hot? My goodness, it's like it's literally summer right now. Hi! How's it going? She's just dying to laugh, this one. How's it going? How's that bow doing? It's doing well. That's so funny. You find me funny? How you doing? Another sweatshirt person? People are crazy. Hello, braids. How's it going? Hello. Doing very well. On your mark, get set. Coke. Pepsi. Shakespeare. Pepsi. The Hulk. Pepsi. Who ran? Who? Oh no! You guys are out! Those are my giggle friends. On your mark, get set. Pepsi. Coke. Shakespeare, Pepsi, last one over is going to be out, Coke, be quick, uh-oh, who is it, who is it, Beck, Coke, ah! braids, pay attention, on your mark, get set, Coke, Pepsi, Shakespeare, Dr. Pepper, Shakespeare, Shira, Shakespeare, The Hulk, Coke, Pepsi, hurry up, last one up is going to be out, Coke, Pepsi, Shakespeare, Pepsi, Coke, Seven it up, don't walk, don't talk, don't breathe, oh, nice catch up the, the uh, podium there. How you doing, Shira? Okay. <laughs> Why aren't you playing? Okay. Hey, what's going on? Hands up! She's like, thinks the cops are here or something. Look at her. Hi. How's it doing? What's up? What, are you holding your keeper? Did it come off? Good man. How you doing, buddy? What's your name? On your mark, get set, Coke! Pepsi. 
All right, we're down to our last two teams. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. Got one, two, three, four, five, six. On your mark, get set, Pepsi, Coke. Last one over is gonna be out, Pepsi. Becca's looking. Who is it, Becca? Pepsi. Ah, oh, out! You're out, sister, get out. You guys are out. The boys representing are out. We're down to our last three. On your mark, get set, Pepsi, Coke, Shakespeare, Pepsi. Uh oh. Yeah, the last one's over, you're out. Awesome job. Since the Bot Mr. Girl always gotta win, the girls who had no clue how to play tied. Mazel tov.
Everybody let's sing the Rushalayim Shira, Mazda stuff, great job. Speech was phenomenal. The great, the whole family looks great. Uh, look forward to uh, seeing a whole life of uh, Nachas and great things from you. Mazel tov. And just so beautiful to see Moshe and Yael. Remember, we saw that when you saw with you together in Ratner's and you weren't even married yet, and to see all this Nachas is um, is really tremendous, beautiful thing, and it should continue. And may we should be there with Shem for the Batara's bat mitzvah and for the girls, the chasanas and Mr. Shem Basha. Tova Muslafa. Just continue much nachas. Mazal Tov, Ya Alem Moshe. Um, thanks for the shout out. You guys are really very, very special and you have very beautiful, delicious girls. And we hope to share many, many more Hank Filt Smachot together. Mazel tov, Shira. This is a beautiful simcha. You look gorgeous, and we can't wait to share more smachot with you. Mazel tov, Oppenheim family. You did not disappoint. We had a great, great time. Atara, we're looking forward. Outside, especially, especially your dress. Hair. Mazel tov, we love you. Mazel tov, Shira. You look beautiful. I'm so happy to have celebrated with you. Hi, Shira. Mazel tov. We were so happy and excited to celebrate with you. We love you. We hope you have a great time tonight. And you continue to be a source of joy and nachat to all your family and all of Klai Yisrael. Love you. Bye. She wants you in. Mazel tov, Shira. Mazel tov, Shira. Mazel tov. We had so much fun today with you. Bye. Mazel tov to Shira and the entire Oppenheim family on this amazing bas mitzvah. Shira, the words they say about you are absolutely true. Pure midos, pure chain, and uh, we loved you in the montage. I have a feeling if someone is very smart, they, they have a new star for their more videos this summer. Mazel tov, thank you so much for having us. Hi, Shira and the entire Oppenheim family. Mazel tov. Shira, you look so regal in your bat mitzvah get up tonight and everyone looks beautiful and I just wanted to wish you a mazel tov. You really, really are a great girl, a special girl. I love that you're, how much you've grown in the place each year and I'm so, so excited that you're coming to Camp Moore this summer and that we get to spend time together in the summer. Mazel tov again and let's have a great summer together. Woohoo! Yeah. Shira. We specially came to say Mazel Tov to you, I will repeat it in Dutch, together. Van harte to felicitiert, Shira. Mazel Tov! Mazel Tov, Shira, we love you. You looked beautiful today. What is my mother's job? Doctor. What is my father's job?
Let's go.
There's a house we can build Every room inside is filled With things from far away Special things I compile Each one there to make you smile On a rainy day They can say, they can say it all sounds
cha-cha again. Turn it out. To the left. Take it back now, y'all. Two hops, two hops. Two hops, two hops. Right foot, let's start. Left foot, let's start. Charlie Brown. Hop it out now. Slide to the right. Slide to the left. Take it back now, y'all. Cha-cha now, y'all. Turn it out. To the left. Take it back now, y'all. Three hops this time. Right foot now. Left foot now, y'all. Cha-cha now. Oh, yeah, Cupid Shuffle time. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Let's get one on the dance floor. Let's go. Let's go, let's go. You know the style now, do you dare, do you we dare? We got a brand new dance. Do you dare, do you dare?
Michael Carter. I put some stuff there that has memories that I didn't really have. I for, I sort of forgot about your bomb until a few hours before. No, and then, okay, great. So I had to, no, but I'm just kidding. So I had to make a glass of it so you can have all the memories. Okay, so that's the 105. So I have a lot, a lot, a lot of 105 memories. Basketball. Oh, I put a fish out of water because of how I tired when jumped into my grandmother's floor. <laughs> okay, so at the bottom I put sprinkles because when we went to Carvel, we were buddies and you were crazy. <laughs> um, then I put a candy because you're sweet, and then um, a, a crayon because you like to. Because you like art. Okay. Um, then there's a monkey because, yeah, you like monkeys. Um, there's um, a math sign because we've, we've been in the same math class for like every single year. Um, and a chair because we used to sit next to each other. Sure. Um, and then, t not really, okay. Um, then this because the candle would not fit. Put this there, and then um, the candle wax, because yeah, that makes sense. Fine, fine, because it's shiny and you shine bright. <laughs> okay, Abigail. Hey, so hi. Uh, so I put on um, a stroller because it would like we like all like rode inside the stroller. I put inside a monkey because they're silly like a monkey, and they like kind of remind me of one. And then, and then, and then they also put on the voice because because you're a really good singer, and then you always like do all these 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 like um sound like these like voices, and then and then and then they also put on my sister Shira because it's her name Shira. And then they put on a basketball because they're really good at basketball. Then I put on like an LOL and like a fun thingy because they're good at art and they're creative, and then you're really funny. <laughs> I put inside it tape because we stick together. I put inside beads because you're whole. E. <laughs> I put inside a Q-tip because you're cute. I put inside a pencil because you're creative and very smart. I put inside a necklace because you're pretty. I put inside a cupcake wrapper because you're sweet and baking soda because you are adorable. So this is a picture of me, Abby, Talia, and you at Sophia's Bar Mitzvah. Um, that we, okay, then. yeah, okay, I, and I put inside glue, okay, I put inside glue because when you were at my house and we played basketball and then we had that little slime incident on my skirt, glue, I, <laughs> yeah, I put in 12 of 13 M&Ms, 12 because you're turning 12 and one for good luck and you're so sweet. <laughs> I put inside crunch Cheez Its because every time in school and camp, you always have Cheez Its. Ew. Cheez Its? <laughs> I put inside a pencil because you're really creative and you're really good at art. I rolled up pic well, two pictures one of Stephen Curry because you're going to be the next Stephen Curry, but a oh. woman. <laughs> And I put it inside a basketball because you're very really good at basketball. And I put it a, and I put in a crayon because you're so good at it. She put Not in a crayon. Okay. So for you, we made a memory box. Not a memory candle. So the top is a canvas because you like art and it just says she. And then it says Mazatop. Okay. So next we put this. I know I put Rainbow. Okay. <laughs> Next we put this. Cause yeah, you are say it. hi to Moochie. Moochie. Okay, you get it. You see it? You see it? Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Cause you're. Okay. Next we put this. Excuse me. When we're at, whenever me or Talia are at your house. We're counting down towards Barry. Hi. 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 Hi.
<laughs> We're always coming back to our dairy so we can play fun food games. And ice cream. And ice cream. Okay. Always somehow have ice cream. Okay, then we put three Lego blocks. Because, yeah. Because we're three people and they stick together, but even when they break, they still come back together, I guess. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> And okay. Next, actually, okay. Next, we put this paper, and it kind of, kind of looks like a bird. See, the paper has wings, right? For the time that we were going to gymnastics, and me and Tali were sitting in car seats, so we were really hyper. And then we threw a paper out the window. And then Molly was there, but it was. Molly. I thought Molly. It was in Molly's car. I threw the paper out the window. And then it landed on some guy's window, and let's just say he wasn't too happy about that. And yeah, and, and then we had to double down your sink, but we had to make sure it didn't go down the drain. Then we put light cereal, because whenever we're at your house, we need an entire box of light. Then we put a lot of pictures. We put this one from when you were little, like the really big parade, and for some reason, I'm in a stroller. And then <laughs> the picture in my album on top of this, is me, you, Talia, Tamar, and Tara, and I'm the only one in the stroller. Right, okay, so what we did was we wanted to do something different for you, something special. So we made a deck of cards. We made a deck of cards of 52 reasons why you're our friend. We'll clean that up after. Okay, on each of the cards, on each of the cards, it says one reason why, you're our, why you are our friend. For example, you were the Cheshire cat, and um, you're thoughtful. You're sparkling and you're funny, you're funny and you're okay. Okay, and basketball. Okay? So we wrote on each other's cards look at that. 52 so reasons why fun. you're our friend. Yay. Yeah. I'm going to decorate the jar with memories that we have with you, like okay. basketball and like, I don't know, okay, cute okay, things. Okay. And, yeah. Okay. Yay! Yay. This was an amazing moment. I had all my friends here and my teacher. <laughs> I got to stand on a balcony. I got to well, wear a tiara. I got to wear a tiara, look beautiful. I got to wear a good dress, pretty dress. I got to lip sing, which didn't really turn out as lip singing. We kind of screamed a little, a lot. <laughs> and then I had fun. <laughs> yeah. Yay! Good evening, and thank you for coming to Shira's Bat Mitzvah. Shira, you're an exceptionally mature, warm, and fun-loving young lady. In preparation for my Bat Mitzvah, I chose to learn about the concept of Shira. Most often, the word Shira is used as a name for beautiful, talented, and amazing young women. Through the dark, through the door, through where no one's been before, but it feels like home. They can say, they can say it all sounds crazy. They can say, they can say I've lost my mind. I don't care, I don't care, so call me crazy. We can live in a world that we Shira, you are an incredible young woman. You are always poised, always smiling, always calm and serene. I don't know how you do it. We can build every room inside is filled with things from far away. Special things I compile, each one there to make. You smile on a rainy day. They can say, they can say.
say it all sounds crazy They can say, they can say we've lost our minds I don't care, I don't care if they call us crazy Run away to a world that we desire Every night I lie in bed The brightest colors fill my head A million dreams keeping me awake I think of what the world could be A vision of the one I see A million dreams is all it's gonna take For the world we're gonna make However big, however small Let me be part of it all Share your dreams From the time that I've gotten to know you, Shira Anything that's been asked of you is with a smile How quickly can I do it? When would you like it done? And you do it so well To the world I close my eyes Shira is an amazing young lady, someone at a young age who is capable of seeing the good in everybody. She, at all of her 12 years of age, teaches me by example every day how to be a better person. I think you want the world could be a vision of the one I see. A million dreams is all it's gonna take. Many parents give their children a bracha at their bat mitzvah about who they should become. Daddy, and my bracha to you is that you should simply continue to have the strength to be you. We're so proud of you, and we love you very much. Mazel tov. Okay.